basically because they provide the wrong type of incentives. Incentives for institutions and people to take uh, costly actions, not for themselves, but mostly for others. So for instance, if you, if the state bails out a bank and other banks recognize that, then they will tend to have a, a behavior towards risk that is very aggressive. In fact, they will, be, they will take very risky actions. Why? Because they know that if they fail, then the government is going to rescue them. This very simple principle that applies to uh, the way you, you raise children also applies to the way you conduct policies towards institutions. The, the first of them is that the, the worst crises are, are self-inflicted. That is, the crises that are domestically originated. So the worst crises don't really come from external shocks or from openness. Uh, or the vulnerability to those shocks. The worst crises come from things that governments and people do to themselves. For instance, uh, a lack of discipline of fiscal policy, um, and, and excessively expansionary monetary policy, or a, a very rigid uh, exchange rate regime, or inflexible labor and product markets. Those are things that really cause cr crisis in, in, in the end. And those are not caused or produced by, uh, by others. They, these are done domestically. So once we can deal with those d domestic sources of volatility, we can reduce uh, the, the type of volatility that is the most damaging to the economy. That's the first lesson. The second lesson had to do with your first question. And th this is the importance of avoiding implicit, unsustainable insurance because of the bad incentives that it creates. And the third lesson um, is that some level of volatility is actually important as a means of adjustment. That is, in order to, uh, to, av to avoid abrupt changes in, a, in, in the economy, uh, you need to have certain flexibility in prices and in the distribution and allocation of resources, labor among them, uh, in order to prevent these large disruptions. If you create a system that is very rigid artificially, then in the end, uh, and that takes only a few years, you will have a very large crisis. Well, there are two types of policies. First is a, a set of macroeconomic policies uh, that consist of two things, a flexible, responsive monetary policy and, and to a counter-cyclical fiscal policy that can be implemented if there is a, enough uh, fiscal cushion to do it. That is, if the country is not or already uh, indebted uh, very highly. So, uh, and, and there is a third possibility that some countries have access to and some don't and this is the possibility of a flexible exchange rate. Exchange rate. Spain, for instance, doesn't have that possibility. Other countries uh, do, and they should use it to the extent possible. So th that those three things, uh, counter-cyclical fiscal policy, um, flexible monetary policy, and flexible exchange rate regimes, uh, that those, uh, those three correspond to macro policies. There is a second type, second class of policy that is at least as important. And this has to do with microeconomic flexibility. Where microeconomic flexibility is defined as the ability of the economy to move resources, to move capital, to move labor uh, across sectors, to take advantage of growing opportunities and to abandon those that are failing. I think it's key, um, as I said in the, a minute ago, flexibility in the dealings of uh, firms and workers. This is the ability to open new firms easily, the, the ability to move resources from across different sectors, and also the ability of workers to prepare themselves and be able to move across sectors as, as the sectors where they are may, may be failing. 
the resistance of, of workers is, uh, to, to change is, is only natural. It's expected that they tend to, tend to, to want in the, to remain in the same sector. But uh, in the end, that is going to cause only unemployment. And that's what you see in countries that are very rigid in terms of labor markets. Uh, some workers will be secure in their positions, but many others with unemployment rates as high as 20% as in Spain will be out of the market. If you were to flex make uh, this uh, situation more flexible in terms of uh, labor market conditions, then maybe you can reduce that unemployment to, uh, to, to, to a level that would be a, a lot more convenient to, to society. The small fluctuations in large countries can affect disproportionately develop, developing economies. But that paradigm, I think, is not as important now as it used to be. If you remember, um, the in, in the 1990s, there were several episodes of external crisis that were maybe minor in the countries of origin that had a very large effect in Latin America, in Asia, and in Africa. But in the recent crisis, the large shocks that occurred in developed, developed rich economies didn't have much of an effect in, uh, in developing uh, countries. So I think that these countries are becoming more resilient to, uh, to the shocks. And the reason they are becoming more resilient is that, is that they, have, they have prepared for this crisis in the last wave of, wave of reforms. In the 1990s, they underwent a number of market-oriented reforms and also institutional reforms that have prepared them for this eventuality. And now we see the fruits of those reforms. Reforms that were criticized at the moment, but only now are see, we see their benefits. But for a long time, there, was, there has been a debate as to whether openness can promote growth or not. And what we see is that there is a heterogeneous response uh, of, uh, of growth to, towards openness. Some countries are able to grow a lot when they open or when they increase their openness, and others increase only very little or maybe even decrease their growth rate. So what explains the heterogeneity? And what we argue is that uh, there are some complementary reforms that help openness promote growth. And when those reforms and those situations are, are obtained, then growth can be expanded. So what are they? Having a, an education, a, a labor force that is highly educated, having a, a markets, labor markets and, and product markets that are flexible is important. Um, having uh, macroeconomic policies that are well disciplined is also, is also very important. And finally, having infrastructure, public infrastructure, that can uh, decrease trade costs is also very relevant. So there is a host of, uh, of complementary reforms that are needed for openness to, to work for the better of the country. It's not just one single uh, a, a policy or reform that can do it, but a host of them. They complement and uh, increase the power of each other. We study terrorism from different perspectives, uh, and one of them, in fact, compares, as you say, the cause of terrorism uh, in rich and in uh, poor countries. And uh, in rich countries, the cause of terrorism are not very large. That's what the evidence says. Even um, the 9-11 terrorist attack in, in the U.S. that was so large didn't have much of an impact on economic activity in the U.S. Um, some sectors were affected. For instance, the air transportation sector was affected, but only temporarily. Uh, very soon, the economy recovered. But uh, poorer can poor countries are, are affected in a much deeper way. Uh, they do suffer when terrorism occurs, and they can suffer for very long. And the main reason for that disparity, that difference, is that these poor economies are not well diversified. So if a sector is hit by terrorism, 
then they cannot quickly or, or swiftly shift resources to another sector. Uh, so they get stuck in that poor situation until they, they are able to rebuild or reconstruct. Um, and also they, they uh, don't have the institutions, the poor countries don't have the institutions that allows them to, to, to manage the threat uh, and then can, be, can live with terrorism in, in a very deep and important way for a decade, two decades, even more. Such was the case, for instance, with uh, Colombia, with the FARC, or Peru with the Shining Path. Uh, we lived with those threats for a number of years, and for a number of years they represented very clear and present dangers to, to the country.